Hello folks, hope you're having a good one, hope everything's going well. If things sound a little bit different, I am at my uh, missus's place today and so there is an echoey room but I've got my headset, I've got my laptop and I'm ready to record. I would never leave you hanging just before a weekend when it comes to hobby nightmares. And speaking of which, later on we will find how one person lost a friend due to his antics in D&D I never actually got him back. So it's not a, a happy ending one later on, but it might be one that's quite cathartic. Let's see. Well, first of all, Josh is up. And if you like what I do here on the channel, then please make sure you subscribe because we are on our way to 20,000 subscribers this year. Hopefully, if we can get there, that would mean the world to me. So if you like what I do and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do so and hit the button down below. Anyway, Josh says, Hey, North. My name is Josh, 34, and I've been recently enjoying your channel, thank you very much, and I am now sharing my own hobby nightmare. To give some background about myself in the hobby, I have been interested in the lore of 40k for years, and I've been watching lore videos and reading the books, but never really got into the hobby side of Warhammer. Then one day, YouTube betrayed me and suggested to me a play on tabletop video, and I just fell in love with the miniatures. So last February, I bought my first miniature and started getting really into the hobby side of Warhammer, focusing on 40k. Now, I have three armies, all of 2,000 points or over, and painted. Wow, that's good going. That is very good going. My first Imperial Guard, uh, my first was, was Imperial Guard, for them moving on to Dark Angels and Custodes. Uh, no worries, I had a good job and buying all the models and paints didn't really impact me negatively. That's good. So I was enjoying my hobby, playing with my friends and meeting lots of amazing people at my local hobby store as well as, as the closest GW store. I was happy with my hobby progress and my girlfriend was happy I found something to focus on that I was enjoying and supported me in hobbying. Now she even has joined me and has two small kill teams that we play together with that she has built with the help with with my help and painted herself good lad i mean it's good that the hobby love is spreading it's always good one second i'm gonna have a quick sip of tea before we move on to the next bit there we go right i always enjoyed going to my local games workshop store meeting other people in the hobby and playing some fun games it was like that until September of last year. Whilst I was at my local King's Workshop store, one of the staff was really excited and talking to people about Warcry and an event they were doing uh, in the store that they were going to be hosting. Now, I wasn't really all interested in a new game at the time, but unfortunately, uh, this just so happened to match up with a time when I was just getting into Age of Sigmar lore and a small kernel of interest in general was there. Okay. So, the staff member got some store models out and played a game of Warcry with me, and I really enjoyed the game system. So, he got me hooked, and I bought some Soul Blight Grave Lord models to build and paint my warband, since it was the faction I was interested in lore wise. I went home, built up, and painted my models, and was so excited to play in the narrative event. I'll attach an image of my warband that I used for the event. Ooh, very nice. Let me have a little look here. Let me have a little look at what you sent me. You want around here somewhere? Here we are, Soul Blight Warband. I love it when it's like dead easy and right at the front like that. So I can see it. Let's have a little look. Throw this on there, throw this on there, throw this on there. That's a nice looking warband, I'm gonna say. Very nice. <laughs> well, I I'm glad you told me that your name was Josh and I could call you Josh because this would be really awkward if you didn't. Just saying. Uh, so, let's put this on here. That, again, a gorgeous, gorgeous warband. One second. Look at that, folks. Absolutely lovely. Well done to you, man. I love the reds. Y your work with reds really good. Absolutely. Mm. Well done to you. 
I'll leave them on for the rest of the poppy nightmare, why not? The event was to be was to be carried out over many weeks of games where we would go into the store and play that week's narrative mission, as well as working on our own Warband's quest to expand the story of the Warband. And the event was great, lots of fun games that continued like this until the last three weeks of the event where I ran into the source of my hobby nightmare. Uh, one of the first of those la- uh, what? One? Sorry, you need to put a, a, a comma there, or we're going to be going into a full sentence, okay. One, the first of those three last weeks I came into the store to play my weekly mission, and I ran into uh, an uncle and nephew pair who I'd seen around the event, but they never really uh, interacted with me up until that point. I don't know why you put one there. They approached me and asked if I was there for the event, and I, and uh, if so, if one of them could challenge me to a game. So, thinking nothing of it, I accepted and got my warband ready to play. Good lad. After meeting my model, after getting my models on the table, they both commented ha on how shabby my paint job was, which kind of pissed me off. But I also knew that being colorblind, my painting can be a, can be a little off, so I just shrugged it off. My opponent for the match, the uncle of the pair, then proceeded to place his plastic grey skaven warband on the table, which irked me even more since he had the nerve to say something about my painting, but was trying to be the, but I was trying to be the bigger man in the situation, I just let it slide. Let's have another look at your models, shall we? Because I think these are really well painted models, I don't know what they're talking about. Like literally, that's insane. Those models are so nice. It's incredible, it's insane. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you, right? Uh, my models are painted to somewhat tabletop standard, right? If I put my models on the table and the person that I'm playing uh, passes a negative comment about my about my painting, do you know what I do? This only happened once, do you know what I do? I pick up my models, I put them back in the case, and I wish him well for the rest of his day, and I move on. Right? I, I do not tolerate shit like that straight away. If you've already put yourself in there, do you know what I'm saying? As somebody who does stuff like that, I'm not playing you. I'm not wasting my precious hobby time on you. People can say I'm a snowflake for that or whatever. Mate, my hobby time is precious. I only get to do one game because the game's that shoddy. I only get to do one game every single time I go I go and play hobby, right? If I get my models out and you insult me straight away, I'm not playing you. I'm, I'm just going to pick up my models and walk away. I am not playing you. Sorry. It ain't happening. Anyway, the game was a very close one. Uh, sorry, the game was very close, one-sided. Sorry, the, the way you've written this, sorry. The game was very one-sided, where I tabled him not too far into the game. And the whole time, all I got was swearing and that's bullshit, quote unquote. Or your dice are fixed, there is no way your guys are that strong. So I showed him my rules and his, re and his response was... Eh, who cares? I really didn't know what to do at that point, so I just did my after-game stuff for the narrative and left the store kind of pissed off that my day, and I was looking forward to, had, had this kind of experience attached to it. The next week, I returned to the store for the event, and there were uh, fewer people there than normal, but at one of the gaming tables, the uncle was playing somebody, and all I could hear from the table was more of the same outburst from him. I noticed the nephew was sitting at a painting table, finishing up his warband. He saw me come over and asked if I was willing to play him, as he had just finished his painting and wanted to try out his new models. I didn't have much time that week, but I also said yes. He explained that he was uh, still very new to Warcry and could use some help with the rules and all the steps. As someone who was also new, I said sure. So I picked a weaker version of my warband from its roster, and we started to play. The game was really fun. I helped him play, and we had a good time that was very close to me with me pulling out a win. Afterwards, we both noticed the uncle standing there, and his comment was, So, did you destroy him too, I suppose? My response was, no, we had a good game, and that the nephew was pretty good. With some more practice and learning his rules a little more, he would be a very good player. 
The uncle then grabbed the nephew and said, let's talk over here. Not violently or anything, but it still put a bad taste in my mouth. But some of my friends from the store came over and chatted with me a bit and it kind of went out of my mind. Hmm, this sounds interesting, okay. The following, uh, do you know what? The, the, the uncle's probably been embarrassed because his nephew uh, put a better, put on a better game than he did. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. The following and last week of the narrative event was this big build-up that the players using the larger lists than normal, so with players using larger lists than normal, as well as it being a 2v2 game with you teaming up with somebody else who had a warband from the same alliance. All right? So, I got my Death Alliance teammate and we waited for our turn to play someone. When all of a sudden, the uncle and nephew pair walks up and the uncle loudly declares that he challenges me. <laughs> it seems like he's in Pokemon. Like he challenges me because he had brought something to beat me after talking to his nephew and they had the perfect plan to win. Okay. At this point, I was really annoyed and didn't want to play them, but the store staff had already paired our teams against each other. So I decided to just get it over with and play because I didn't want my teammate to have to suffer because I had bad feelings towards this uncle. So, as we started to get ready, the uncle brought out a large chaos monster model and says, this is what's going to be your doom, and then started to laugh like he was some sort of crazy person. My teammate was kind of laughing at himself and thought the whole thing was kind of funny, but I could tell how this was going to go, but tried to just have a positive attitude throughout the game. So, both sides started to deploy their warbands, and right in front of the middle was this large grey chaos monster, of course, unpainted. As the uncle set it down, he had this large smug grin on his face. Oh no. My teammate pulls me to the side and starts to plan our game. He wants to focus down that monster and then go and focus on objectives later. It sounded like a good plan to me, so I said sure, let's do it. So the game starts, and our team moves a bunch of chaff models up and starts chipping wounds off the monster. On our opponent's turn, the monster kills some of our chaff, and gloating starts from the uncle. So, we just ignore it and keep the game and keep to the game plan. The poor nephew at this point is just being ordered around by his uncle on how to move each of his models and to try and just be roadblocks for our better models so his monster can keep killing us off. And so the first turn ends and we get ready to continue. Dude, this guy's a piece of work. If you ever wanted to know like what a man-child looks and sounds like, here it is. This is a guy who's never been told no in his life. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. My teammate gets to go first on turn two and does a bunch of damage to the monster, monster getting it close to being dead. The uncle just laughs and says you can't defeat my monster and proceeds to kill more chaff models. This opened up space for one of my blood knights to charge in, use his ability to do damage when charging into a model, and with that uh, and the damage at, from his attacks, the monster was killed, skewered on his lance. The uncle then blew his lid off and started accusing us of cheating, saying nothing should be able to kill this monster. Well, to be fair, he's outed himself there. If nothing's able to kill the monster, then isn't he kind of cheating by bringing that to a small game? Do you know what I mean? I know it's not technically cheating, but he's still outing himself as a bad player for doing that. He then points at me and says, and I quote, You're no fun to play against, and... Um, uh, unquote, and that he would never play me again, so I guess you win the game. He grabbed all of his models off the table, including his nephews, and threw them in a box and stormed out of the store, leaving me and my teammate in absolute shock. At first, I thought I could, I could, uh, at first all I could think about was what the hell just happened. We had managed to kill two of our opponent's models, and they had killed eight of ours. Why did he do that? Then I started to feel bad for the nephew because he seemed like a good kid who liked the hobby and was enjoying just playing the game. My teammate tried to cheer me up. All I had was this big feeling of disgust and disappointment for this kid. The narrative event that spanned over the, the two months ended like this. What was it all for? The hard work learning a new game system, painting my warband up even with the difficulties, difficulties I have painting, 
crafting a fun lore filled backstory for my warband and all its members I just I just felt like it was a waster of a time for it all to end like this mate um welcome to being a creative person in a geeky space all right now I'm going to tell you something now one second let me have a sip of tea all right welcome to being a creative person in a geeky space as the creative type and if you've actually got talent as well unfortunately you will always 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 be the dad the organizer the one who makes things for the people and sometimes people are rude sometimes people are assholes and don't turn up to your session or they don't turn up to your game or they don't put the same amount of effort into their army as you did to yours right that is the curse of the creative in geeky subjects in geeky places right I'm one of those people. I've been a dungeon master for a long, 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 long time. Um, and I've absolutely hated some of it because when you put your, your, you know, your soul into something, because people ask you to, and then they don't bother turning up for the session, that kicks you squarely in the teeth, right? When the session doesn't go very well, because you've got players at the table who aren't there in good faith, again, huge kick in the teeth. Uh, you're having the same frustration, unfortunately. And it happens all of the time with people who are creative in the hobby space. No matter what version of the hobby you're doing, you're the one who's going to be left frustrated a lot of the time. Because you put more effort into your shit than other people do into theirs. Especially if you're doing it in a role-playing sphere. Anyway, moving on. While dwelling on this, the Games Workshop staffer came over and said congratulations to me on my teammate for winning the last game of the narrative and told us the outcome of said narrative. Which, while still in shock, just kind of faded in uh, in one ear and out of the other. They then asked what had happened because the game should have taken longer. I couldn't even say anything. So my teammate had explained what had happened and the staffer's response was, and I quote, Oh, well you get people like that in the hobby sometimes, what can you do? Unquote. At that response, I was just lost for words. The manager of the store, after hearing what had happened, came over and in a joking manner presented us with this kind of fake certificate saying we won first prize in, in inducing rage quitting. And I felt a feeling of disgust filling me up. Dude, you need, to, you need to fucking lighten up a little bit. I took it and kind of laughed it off. I left the store and haven't returned since then because each time I think about going there, I just feel kind of off. Mate, you need to stop taking life so bloody seriously. I, I, I'm with you. And the, the guy was acting like a dick. But um, I don't know how you're going to cope with life if this has ruined your day. I, I mean, not ruined your day, but absolutely destroyed it to the point where you're standing there nearly crying when other people are joking about it. That's, you know what I mean? Like, you need to, you need to sort your shit out because that, that's, that's not going to help you in life. You know what I mean? Um, I agree with you. Like, the guy was a dickhead and you're in the right here. But come on, the Games Workshop staff are just trying to cheer you up. They're just trying to... What, what are they supposed to do? What are, what are they supposed to do? About people who are not in the hobby in good faith, who are going to be angry and shouty. I mean, if they heard that stuff, if they, if they, would, if they heard anything that he was doing, they would have warned him or kicked him out. Do you know what I mean? But if they didn't, it's not their fault. You can't be everywhere at once, all right? And when they've heard what has happened, they've apologized and, oh, well, what can you do? And joked with you and tried to lighten up your day. And all you've done is stand there and got mopey. No, mate. Come on. Come on. Like, like, like it's a game of toy soldiers at the end of the day. Okay. We need to... You, don't, don't become like, like the uncle there. Don't let it ruin your entire day and your week. Looking back on it now, I realised the manager was just trying to ease the tension and make amends to the situation and didn't mean any harm by this gesture. I'm still not sure what the correct response is to the whole situation, but for now, I'm staying in my friend gaming group, as well as my local hobby store, Games Night, and avoiding Games Workshop for the time being. Up to you, mate. Up to you what you do. You know uh, you know what I've just told you to do. Just man up and go back to the store, and if you see that guy again, don't play him and tell him why. That's it. That's exactly it. That's all you need to say. Just don't play him and tell him why. And get on with your day. You've taken it far too personally. Everybody's been rage put on at some stage. I have, right? You know? I've even walked away from games and been, and been told I'm rage quitting. When, when it's literally... I've been, I've, I've been winning games, right? 
having winning games, walked away because the other person is an arse hat and been told I'm rage quitting. How am I rage quitting if I was winning? Right? Happens all the time, dude. These people are in the hobby. If you're going to be here, you will come across them at some stage. You've got to learn how to deal with it and just walk away. Right? That's how you gatekeep. You don't gatekeep by keeping them around in your head all the time and fixating on it. I bet you're the kind of person who stands there in the shower and just thinks about really shitty things that you've done and you get really, like, self-hating in the shower. I bet you do that. I bet you do that shit. Cut it out. No need. No need. You're in charge of your own brain. You're in charge of your own feelings. If you let somebody else get in, in your own feelings to this, this extent, that's on you. You can't control how other people act or perceive you. All you can do is control how you act and, and how you're perceived. Don't let them in. Fuck them off. All right? Cool. Uh, DM Nick says, Hello, North. You can call me Nick. I have done. Thank you very much. Let me just mark that off there. It's not my real name, but I'm I'm slightly internet famous, and I don't want to air dirty laundry out in the open. Oh, real name at the end of the email if you're interested in who I really am. Don't read it aloud when you get to it. Oh, okay. Got to see this one. Where was it? Um, let's have a little look. Uh, nope, don't know who you are. Sorry, mate. <laughs> That's horrible. No, I, I literally don't know who you are. So, um, but I can't know every every YouTuber that's out there or every, or every person on Reddit. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Anyway. I've been listening to your videos on and off for a while, and I've been thinking of sharing some stories about my experiences within the hobby. I have one or two nightmares related to Warhammer, but a lot more that relate to Dungeons and Dragons and other RPGs. This story is about a problem player in one of my Dungeons and Dragons games, and how having a bad friend can ruin your experience playing the game altogether. I'll discuss group dynamics and might go on a tangent or two during this tale, but it does end with a happy ending, contrary to popular belief. Okay, cool. At least for me. This email is a bit long, and I can chop it up into multiple parts if you like, as there are several different stories about the same dude. That's fine. Let's just read it. I used to be good buddies with one of my players from my D&D game. Let's call him Mr. X. Because that's the social media platform from which he regularly downloaded all of his opinions. Oh dear. We used to play face-to-face -face games before the end of the world in 2020, forced us to switch to playing online. I knew this guy from when we used to hang out and play Magic the Gathering in my local store. He had joined some of my live D&D games at the same store on and off, but was never a constant player at my table, as he would always choose to play Magic over D&D whenever he had the chance. The entire gaming group was kind of like that sometimes. We'd make arrangements to play and I'd show up with all my books and gear, only to find the whole table playing Magic and my players didn't feel like D&D tonight. So they all bought their card decks, even though we had made prior arrangements and all agreed to play D&D at, at this time on the same day. Told ya. What did I just say in my last hobby nightmare, right? Creatives. The most abused people in this hobby, I swear to God. Don't waste our fucking time. The minute you waste my time, the second you waste my time in role-playing, or anything like that, I walk away. I walk away. I've done it once, right? And it was in black coat when I was ill, right? And I literally was just in bed, and I completely forgot about the black coat session. I didn't turn up, and I was so guilty. I was so apologetic. I was absolutely beside myself with guilt. Now, you know, I've done it once, and I felt that way. Every time it's happened to me, no one's given me a shred of guilt or even apologized, really. You know, it's it, uh, just just some nerds, man. Some nerds it, are just infuriating. They really are. I don't know. Oh, anyway, I didn't bring my deck because I had come with D&D &D books instead. A whiteboard for drawing maps, minis, and, a, and dice in my bag. So I didn't, so I didn't like that they had just not respected my time and effort. Yeah, man. Yeah. They could have at least called me and told me not to bring all this stuff, 
as they all had my phone number at the time. Dickheads. I agree. Dickheads. This was my first brush with Mr. X being an asshole. Granted, he was only a small part of that whole group. Take a sip of tea here and get back to my problem player in a sec. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. I always thought he was a bit strange. He used to do this thing where he'd interrupt you while you were talking to say something slightly unrelated and then change the topic completely. He would do it very, very loudly and then launch into a very long, mostly one-sided conversation about magic cards, the lore of the cards, the books, just typical nerd things. He would talk about Magic the Gathering for hours and sometimes I couldn't even get a word in. Back then I used to think that's just how he is sometimes. I've met autistic people and some of my friends are on the spectrum, so I can forgive the occasional misunderstanding and awkwardness in social behaviour. Magic the Gathering seems to attract that type and so does 40k. Yeah, and again, nothing wrong with that, you just gotta learn to live with it. I'm not exactly normal myself, but I can at least keep up a conversation, listen and respond appropriately and stay on topic. I didn't realise this changing subject behaviour was a red flag for a bigger problem. When we switched to playing online, most of my live players didn't make the transition to online with me because it was a different vibe. And playing D&D online isn't for everybody. Yeah, it's not really for me either. I, I, I do like being, uh, I like being um, in person, if I can be. I get that and respect their opinion, mostly because it's true. For me as a GM, leading a game online is a lot harder. Instead, I recruited some people from online space, one guy from Discord, one guy from Facebook, and one who was a friend of a friend, one was a former co-worker, and one was my best friend at the time. I also asked the guys at the local game store who we used to play Magic with, and Mr. Rex was on board. Another mutual friend was also on board until he heard that Mr. Rex was going to be there. At that point, he instantly changed his mind, and I quote, Oh, X is going to be there? Uh, then I'd rather not. I don't want to play with that guy, unquote. He wouldn't elaborate on why, but I later learned the two of them had gotten into an actual verbal and physical fight over something Mr. X had said. That was another red flag I ignored to my detriment. Our online games with Mr. X and the online crew kicked off rather awkwardly because Mr. X immediately got into an argument with my Facebook friend about something that happened in-game which led to Mr. X's character getting murdered by a small army of low-level enemies. My Facebook friend criticised Mr. X's playing, pointing out how his character's death was due to poor choices. This really wasn't helping him cope with his character dying, so I confronted my Facebook friend and asked him not to antagonise Mr. X, and that, he, and that all he was doing was rubbing salt in the wound. I agree. Yeah, if somebody's lost a character, don't start telling them that they lost it because they played badly. That's a dickhead thing to do. I'm on Mr. X's side here. I'm on his side here. What a dickhead thing to do. Sorry, I, I, this is my first time playing D&D or something. You know what I mean? And you're like, oh, well, your character wouldn't have died if you'd have just done X, Y, and Z. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. I'd have given him the same response. Short shrift. Yeah, dick, swivel. Fuck off. I advised him that he should instead consider apologising, and if he really wants to be friends, you could help him build his next character, as working together on a project will surely be a better way to play together. Mr. X was set on playing a druid, so I advised Mr. Facebook to help compile a list of animals that Mr. X could turn into at any given level, a task that Mr. Facebook was very happy to perform, as he also had played a druid in the past and also knew most of the animals. But he shouldn't tell him what to turn into or how to play, just to give him the list and let him pick from what he thinks is best. I smoothed over that pretty well, or so I thought. Half of DMing is about making the game, the other half is about managing your relationship with the players. Nobody wants an unhappy DM, and the quickest way to become unhappy is by having salty players. This was session 2, 
and if they were going to continue like this, the rest of the game would be super uncomfortable. The two of them would never become really good friends, but at least they weren't so hostile after I intervened. The reason I told you this story is to show you that I am not adverse to handling hostile player behaviour and I do confront people when I think they're being a bit of a dick. Alright, after playing once weekly for a good long time, Mr X started showing his true colours. This is when he started making demands. One evening before our game session began, he started making demands of me to change my game world. He wanted gay, trans and disabled representation in my games. <laughs> God no. Listen, I'm not saying you shouldn't have representation like that in your games, that's not what I'm saying. But if you're making a demand of that to a normal game master in a normal game world, who hasn't gone out of his way to say that they don't exist in his game. Like, if your GM says, trans people, gay people, and disabled people don't exist in my world, yeah, that's when you say, yes, mate, they should, right? That's when you say that, right? But if he's just giving you a normal game world, right, and you're saying that you need more representation, you're being a dick. Don't do that, all right? Because for all you know, they're there already. They're just, they're just not right in front of you right now, right? It's a given that they're there. <sighs> what a twat. I thought he was a bit unreasonable for making demands and threatening to leave the game unless I changed it, quote unquote. Let him go then. I'm going to get really frustrated with this, aren't I? L bye. Bye, Felicia. Bye-bye. See you then. See ya. I mean, can you imagine the nerve of that guy? We discussed it all night, and after considering it, Having diversity of that kind in the game wasn't such a bad idea. It's not, mate, but giving in to dickheads like this is, because they're never satisfied. They get one thing, and then they take and take and take and take and take, and demand and demand and demand and demand, because they're fucking retards. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to say that word, but it is true. Alright? I think this all the time, right? The word retard isn't for somebody with special needs. That's somebody with special needs. That's not a retard, right? Not to me. A retard's a guy like this, right? You're socially retarded. You literally are an idiot. Like, you don't have any sort of, of mental compunction to uh, be around other people, okay? Absolutely annoying. That, you, Having diversity in your world is no bad thing. Acquiescing to the demands of a dickhead like this is going to ruin your game. No matter what it is. Anyway. Okay, believe it or not, it does make things interesting and gives me, the DM, more opportunities to play NPCs that I hadn't considered portraying before. Which is fun and opens up the door to improvise more. In other words, I added more diverse characters. But I did it my way, I did it for me, and I don't regret it because it did make the game more interesting through the way that I did it. It's true. Keep reading to find out how I did it, but also keep in mind that my game did eventually fall apart because of this person being unreasonable in the future. That's because you gave in, mate. He should have been kicked out there and then. There and then. Never make demands of my world. It's mine. It's your... It's your pleasure playing here, right? If I've created this world and I put F into it, lucky you, you're getting to play in it, right? That's how highly I value my own work and my own time. Lucky you, you get to play in it. You get a DM. Do you realize how lucky you are to have a game master who loves creating worlds and loves creating stories? The amount of lazy game masters there are out there who will just do like, combat constantly or do other things like that constantly without actually thinking about it because they want to roll like a, like a, a dark soul session do you know what i mean that will bore you to tears do you realize how lucky you are to have a dm who likes telling stories likes creating worlds you are the luckiest you are you are one of the upper one percent of DD players because you've got a gm like that all right if you don't like the world i built fuck off get in the sea, row to somebody else's game, and go and play over there. Alright? Never change your world for anybody. Anybody. Ever. 
Okay? So, the first NPC that I added was a small girl who had a learning disability. See, th th that's fucking... That's insulting to me. How are you going to play that? How are you, as a grown man, going to roleplay a small girl with a learning disability at the table? That's insulting, dude. Her fluffy white cat had run away from home and the girl had wandered off to find it. This happens often. However, one evening the cat came back but the girl did not. Her father was worried sick and asked the adventurers to help find her, which they did. All the NPCs that I added had little quests like that. Okay, that's fine. I added a blind priest who needed escort. That's cool, I like that. Disabled old warriors who got injured in wars in their youth. One was a lord who needed a cane and a leg brace to walk. The other was also a lord who had lost a hand and fallen from a great height, which in injured his spine, and so he needed a cane to balance his weight and not put, put too much strain on his lower back. Magic could not heal them because of, you know, reasons. Okay, these are cool. These are cool. You know, apart from the little girl, these are cool. I also added a partially deaf city guard captain who had lost most of his hearing and just never got access to magical healing. So he shouted all the time and needed people to shout back. Again, you're, get, you're playing somebody with disabilities for a laugh there. You know what I mean? This is what I mean. Forced diversity never works. It never works. Classic drill sergeant. He was really fun to roleplay. I put in two gay NPC wizards who were lovers and were planning to get married one day. The party interacted with the wizards for several sessions as their quest involved, uh, uh, revolved around magic happenings and hunting a vampire in their city. The wizards created scrolls for the heroes to use and gave advice on magical matters. They got to know one of them in particular very well as he travelled with the party for a while. The other was aloof and very involved in his magical research in his tower. I also added a temple to the love goddess whose most prized possession was a girdle of gender change. Of course it was. Uh, the faithful had taken his cursed item and recontextualized its curse to be a blessing instead. They wore the girdle to perform, to, to perform religious rites and to experience what it is like to be the opposite gender which brings a higher perspective. Yeah, it does. <laughs> all it's going to lead to is a lot of female characters just like playing with their dicks. That's all it's going to lead to. Um, when they would, and every girl I've ever talked to, I said, "What was the if I if I you could be a man for the day? What was the first thing you would do?" And they've all said, "I think like I'd play with my dick for like six hours." Yeah, of course you would. Of course you would. Right? Nearly, and like every woman I've ever said that question to has said that. You know what I mean? Or something along those lines. Let's look at my balls. You know, that kind of a thing. When they were done, they simply cast a remove curse, uh, which the priest instead called a miracle. For one hundred gold, for one thousand gold, sorry, the clergy offered a service to a person who wanted to put on the belt and experience what it's like to be the opposite gender. For the rest of their week, a priest or priestess will escort them and guide them through the experience to bring understanding. Why? I certainly hope this isn't a grim, dark, you know, a grim, dark fantasy world that you've made here, because that's bollocks. <laughs> They'd be like, there's no way that would work. In a, D in a squeeish D&D setting, where everybody's, like, frolicking, and, uh, you know, everybody's by, then yeah, okay, I get it. In Baldur's Gate 3, basically. This is Baldur's Gate 3, it works. I want to have sex with a bear. Oh, God, stop. Of course you do. Of course you do, you fucking degenerate. Anyway. Uh, for men who became women, they would teach them how to comb their hair. For women who became men, they taught them to tend their beards. For both genders, the priests helped them pick out clothes that accentuate their better features, what perfumes to wear, how to care for their, their new skin. They gave makeovers and taught how to apply makeup and assisted in, a, in a social situations or protected them. Anything a trans person would need to transition successfully, the clerics provided. If the faithful under in, if the faithful undergoing the change needs any help navigating the world as a new person or adapting to their new role, the clergy was always there for them as caring advisors and loving, sympathetic human beings. Again, this is great. 
it's fine. Do you know what I mean? As a world, it's fine if that's what you're playing. If that's what you're playing, completely fine. No problem there. If this is the kind of world you're playing in, absolutely no problem at all. You know? Everybody should get to play the world that they've made in their own way. My issue comes... If you've made a standard medieval fantasy world that you liked, and you liked just how it was before, and now you've got to change it because some random idiot in your gaming group has decided that it's offensive that it's not this way. Do you know what I mean? If you made a setting that was very Baldur's Gate 3 ish, you know, then fine. And by the way, if you are gay and you are trans or whatever, I'm not calling you a degenerate. Don't be, don't be silly. All right? Don't be, don't be an idiot. Don't be one of those people, all right? What I mean by degenerate is, when you see Baldur's Gate 3, you see games like that, or settings that have no restrictions, or settings that just uh, focus on, you know, sex, and focus on um, everybody being able to do whatever with whoever, whatever, right? Whenever you get a setting that does that, it opens the gates to actual degenerates, people who want to have sex with animals, things like that, right? That's why we have the, the bear sex scene in, in Baldur's Gate 3. And that's why a load of the fucking degenerates playing were like, Oh my god, it's so progressive. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's disgusting. Okay? That's disgusting. That's horrible. Like, don't put that in your games. Don't put that in your world. Don't cater to these people. Because it's a very slippery slope. And I swear to God, in 20 years... Right, these same games will have underage shit in it, and it'll be treated as normal if we carry on down this slope, and I don't want to. I don't want to go down the slope, thank you very much. Right? It's okay having gay people in your setting, it's great. Have representation, fine, all in there. You shouldn't need to say that these people are in the world, they should just be there. Do you know what I mean? The fact that your player needs a, a, a an assertment like this is childish and immature. You shouldn't. Okay? You shouldn't. It should just be, yeah, there are gay people in this world, of course there are. Yeah, there are disabled people in this world, of course there are. You're not speaking to one right now, but they're around. I just don't, you know, I don't focus in on them because they're not in the story yet, you know? And then bring, and do exactly what you did. Bring a lord who's on a crutch. That's great. Or a death guard. Okay, don't play it for laughs, but yeah, okay, fine. Put them in there too. But the minute you start acquiescing to these people, it's going to get more and more and more, you know, out there. Especially somebody who is, you know, one of those Baldur's Gate players. You know who you are. Oh, yeah, yeah we have the bear sex in there. It's a slippery slope. In 20 years, it'll be, well, why can't I have sex with the person who's not, who's not of age? Well, it's a medieval setting, don't you know? That's where it's going. Don't even fucking try and convince me it's not. It is. And I don't want to go there. So, you know, keep the degenerates out of my fucking game spaces, please. Gays, you're welcome here. Trans people, you're welcome here. No problem. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I'll, and you can even have people like that in your setting. No problem. Have them in there. Representation is good. But, you know, if somebody forces you to do it and then wants to have sex with weird things in your game, Get that person out your fucking game straight away, all right? The minute somebody wants to have sex with a dragon, they're gone in my setting, in my in my games. The minute somebody wants to have sex with something that's not a human, they can leave. They're not welcome at my table. That's it, right? Right? Tell a joke about it, fine. But don't actually want to do it. If your character actually wants to do it, that's not the kind of character I want in my world or my setting, right? Are there really weird people in the world? Yes, but I don't want to draw attention to you. Thank you very much. All right. So the Church of the Love Goddess, gender, ch gender change is a religion. Okay, we've already covered this. We're covering this. This huge paragraph just says the same thing four times. Okay. Um, after all, love is for everybody. And in order to be able to love others, one must be able to equally love and accept oneself. For a thousand gold, they can become your personal trainer through the process. A nefarious criminal stole the girdle and the party was tasked with getting it back. I was happy with adding things like that in my game because it made the world not necessarily more realistic or logical, but for sure more interesting. As you can see, 
I put lots of thought and care into it. All my players loved it and got to interact with all these NPCs, including Mr. X. But he was not satisfied for long. Yeah, what a surprise. What a surprise. The never fucking happy dude. After accepting all these changes and saying that I was willing to accommodate these, uh, these ideas, he changed the narrative and became unhappy with how I portray these not real people because according to him, it was insensitive for me to portray gay non-player characters if I am not gay myself. It was bad for me to portray a trans character if I am not trans. Dude, I hope you that she said to him, you wanted this. You literally asked for this, and now you're not happy that I'm doing it? Get the fuck away from my table. Leave. It also became unacceptable for me to do accents at some point, even though he never had an issue with it before. In fact, being able to do voices and create interesting NPCs was the whole reason he used to praise me as a GM in the past. I specifically remember that his favourite NPC was a doctor with a Russian accent, but somewhere along the way, the accent became not cool anymore. If I had to point out every inconsistency, I'd be here all day. It should be pretty clear that the dude was trying to control how I GM, and this control freak behaviour continued for a long time, expressing itself in multiple ways in game and out of game. It got to a point where he tried to control what conversations people could or could not have in Discord server by telling people to stop talking about whatever subject he didn't like and spamming the chat with memes and trying to be disruptive. You'll recall I mentioned earlier how he would spontaneously change subjects while speaking to people in real life. Well, it turns out it wasn't autism, it was control freakism. It could also be a bit of autism to be fair. But mate, uh, you've done this to yourself. I, I completely respect you as a GM. And I'm sorry this happened to you. Completely sorry that this happened to you. But you've done this to yourself. You've completely done this to yourself. By not having standards. By not gatekeeping properly. You need to gatekeep your own table. You're a GM. You're putting the most effort into these games. You need to decide who is at your table and who isn't. And if somebody isn't playing ball, get them the fuck out of there. Alright? This is what you get. This is what you get, mate. I'm sorry. Maybe you needed to learn this lesson. And have this guy ruin your campaign. Maybe you needed this. But it still irks me that somebody who is as, as passionate a GM as you is having to put up with this bullshit. Okay? Alright, moving on. We had a separate channel just for memes and multiple text channels for conversations. So we all knew that he, that he was spamming on purpose and trying to prevent us from talking normally. He began treating fellow players in our Discord server the same way that he treats strangers online, being very disrespectful to anybody, insulting everybody's intelligence and things like that. He became convinced that he was entitled to dictate what people can or cannot talk about. I later learned that he was even talking shit behind my back when I wasn't there in our voice chats, which completely eroded my trust, not only in him, but in all the rest of my friend group, because for whatever reason, they believed his lies. This behaviour contributed to the disintegration of our gaming group and irreparably damaged our relationship. I repeatedly called him out, multiple times, but he refused to change his behaviour so we stopped being friends and are no longer on speaking terms. Well, good. I'm sorry you had to lose your campaign for it to get, for it to get that way. I didn't play any role-playing games for a long time after that. Thinking back, I should have kicked this guy from my table back when he first started insisting on unnecessary changes to my game world. Thank you very much, good lad. Thinking further back, I should have investigated why my other buddy didn't want to play with this guy. It turns out there was a very good reason. People like him are never satisfied. They will keep moving the goalposts constantly and will never be happy unless they have complete control. If and when, sorry, if and when you decide to put your foot down and set boundaries, they will get really pissed off. 
seek to turn others against you, try to control what you can and cannot say, and if you disobey, they will attempt to ruin your reputation while elevating themselves. It's clearly not about making the game better. No matter how much thought and effort you put into whatever you're, you are creating, people like this will always find something wrong with it, and if they can't, they will seek to find fault in the creator himself. It's about control. Himself or herself, sorry. It's about control. You are completely right there, mate. Completely right. And I'm sorry, I, I bet you need this situation to come to this conclusion. I bet. So well done to you for opening your eyes a little bit. Well done. Uh, uh, he or she, I don't know which it is now, carries on. Cut people like that out of your life, especially if you have known them for a long time. Never allow people to make demands from you. Unless they have a gun pointed to your face, you have no reason to indulge them. Don't let assholes talk over you or let them tell you what you can or cannot play in a game that you made yourself. They will only make you unhappy and step all over you. They will piss on your wonderful creations and never appreciate anything you do. They expect your obedience and nothing else. Shove a grenade up their arse and pull the pin on the way out. Oh, I like this. You, you work off that anger. Good for you. I haven't played in with that group for years at this point, but the betrayal still stings. In December of last year, I joined a new group in my area and we play games live. We play 40k, kill team and more time and sometimes play video games together online. As far as I can tell, there is one person in the group who is a bit dramatic, as she regularly, creatively interprets the rules, and never has time to discuss or look it up in the book, or things like that. I try not to play with people like that, so things should be cool between us if we stay in separate corners. Good for you. Again, adjudicate who shares your hobby space with you. If you don't like a person, ostracize them, get out of there. Fine. It's your hobby time, at the end of the day. In the far future, when I get to know people a bit, I plan on floating the idea of playing a 40k RPG like Death Watch or something similar to the group, since we all like 40k. Instead of rushing into it this time, I want to get to know everybody better, so I don't have to put up with problem causes in the future. My plan to weed people out is to inform them that in my universe there are female space marines to see their reaction. If they make too much of a fuss about the cannon, or jump for joy a little too enthusiastically, I won't play with them. Oh, ho, ho, I like it. I've got logical law and everything. For a quick version of said law, I'll put up it, I'll put it up in a postscript. I tweak it regularly and to weed out inconsistencies, and I will one day put it in writing completely from the beginning to end of a short story. For now. On, uh, from now on, that homebrew law is my litmus test to weed out fanatics and salivating perverts. Thanks, Nick. Okay, I'll weed out your homebrew law um, in the in the Space Brain chapters video. So I think I'm moving most of the law over to there. So I'll do it in that in that video. But well done to you. You need to gatekeep your own hobby experience. If you don't, you allow things like this to happen, and you, and you pretty much make sure that your own hobby space is going to be ruined as it goes on, right? I'm sorry, that's just how it is, okay? Most of the people in this hobby don't need gatekeeping. They're good people, you know? And if you're gay, if you're if you're straight, if you're white, black, whatever, if you're trans, doesn't matter. You, you are welcome here, right? In this hobby. You're welcome here. You're welcome to play with us. You're welcome to have fun with us. I don't give a shit if you're a woman wearing a man's suit or if you're a man wearing a dress. Don't give a shit. You're welcome at my table, all right? What you're not welcome to do is make demands that I change the working world you're playing in to acquiesce to your own worldview. In fiction, you should want to get involved with other worldviews. The very reason why I find the changing of the Canari in Dragon Age to be so offensive to me is because they are a militant militant totalitarian right-wing regime in the first dragon age in the first dragon age game at least that's how they're described right and you get to explore this other way of thinking and know why it's different to yours right and the vast majority of people 
saw the way Sten and the Kanari acted in the first Dragon Age game and thought, wow, they're toxic as fuck, they're not like me, right? Because you explored what they, what they think, you saw the merit in what they think, and you saw the vast amount of demerit in what they think, and you think, yeah, that's not for me. Because for, for, because for the 5% of things you get right, there are 95% of things that you completely get wrong, right? Because you, you're exploring other cultures and other way of thinking. What Bioware then did is they took the Canari, they cut their balls off, and they made them this, you know, still totalitarian, but they took all of the spice, all of the controversial bits away from them. So now, in fact, they now actually accept trans people, right? That's in their code. The very, in the first Dragon Age game, Sten, um, if you're playing as a woman, doesn't get why you're a warrior, because in his culture, females are not warriors that's it right and he says to you why would somebody want to be something that they're not when they're born when they're born that way controversial i know controversial but it's good to explore why he thinks that way all right because you because you will still agree at the end of it so you will still disagree at the end of it you're still like, yeah i don't think that way i did i disagreed with him but i could see where he was coming from because that's what his culture was doing right and it worked for them fine Okay, you know, whereas in Dragon Age uh, uh, Inquisition, all the Canari love trans people. They're like, no, 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 uh, you, you say to the Iron Bull during that thing, why does your lieutenant dress up like a man? And he goes, he is a man, even though it's quite clearly a woman, right? They neutered the Canari. They, take away, they took away all of their spice and nuance. Why? Because they didn't want to have anything spicy in their game world. They acquiesced to the to the people who are whinging online about how this culture is a bit toxic, right? There's nothing wrong with having toxic cultures in your fantasy setting, as long as you're not putting propaganda out there that this is the way you should think, right? There's nothing wrong with having toxic cultures in your fantasy setting, as long as they're not portrayed as the good guys. No culture in your setting should be the good guys at all. None of them, okay? They should all just be cultures in your world. That's how they should be. That's how good writers handle it. They're all just cultures you happen to share your game world. You know? One could be left-wing, one could be right-wing, one could be totalitarian, one could be, you know, this, uh, this, uh, utopian state that's crumbled, because obviously utopian states can't exist, because people get frustrated. You end up like the Eldar Empire, do you know what I mean? And you, you fuck each other into oblivion, do you know what I mean? So, again, don't acquiesce to what people want you to do in your own setting. Do what you want to do. And gatekeep it religiously. Okay? This is the setting we're playing in. If it's for you, welcome. I don't care whether you're trans, straight, gay, uh, black, white, Chinese, whatever. I don't care what you are. I don't care what nationality you are, whatever you want, what religion you are. If you want to play in a grim, dark fantasy setting like mine or whatever I'm doing at the time, you're welcome here, my friend. If you want to buy into what I'm doing, welcome. I welcome you to my table. If you don't want that, then you don't have to be here. Go elsewhere and play a game that you want to play. All right? But do not sit at my table and dictate to me what I can and can't do with my own game world. That is the fast track to you getting in the fucking sea and staying there. All right? Cool. Love you a long time. I will speak to you on Monday with some more hobby nightmares. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye now.